some ya bila wall get some steel some cement some sand some stone and most importantly some blocks that wall is going to be made of those blocks put together whether it's a small wall a big wall a short wall a tall wall those blocks are going to come together to make that wall and that's similar to how organisms are made whether it's a 25 meter long blue whale or even the germs in our hands that we can't see but we kill when we use hand sanitizer all living things are made up of cells in today's lesson we are going to look at the building blocks of living things cells i am calvin brown welcome to another episode with the jamaican science teacher i wanna learn science but i don't know where to go i just click to youtube and this is what the results show me the jamaican science teacher 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 Yeah Let's get straight into it the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Structural unit basically means that the cells form the organism. The organism will be made up of these cells. Functional unit means that all the functions performed by the organism will be performed by cells. Some organisms are unicellular, which means they are made up of only one cell. Others are multicellular, composed of many cells. You and I have trillions of cells in our bodies. Each cell displays the seven characteristics of living things. If you missed that video, you can just click here to watch that video. Cells contain some structures called organelles. Where you come from? Oh, you tell people to subscribe yet? No. Or you do that, please. All right, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Deal with it. Remember to subscribe, like, share, comment. All right, thanks. Yeah, so. Cells contain some structures called organelles. These organelles perform functions which are vital to the life of the organism. All plants and animal cells possess the following organelles. A cell membrane or plasma membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, among others. The cell membrane or plasma membrane is a partially permeable layer surrounding the cell. The cell membrane controls what enters and exits the cell like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide and glucose. Just as how you wouldn't allow any and everybody off the road to enter your homes, the cell membrane polices what substances enter and exit the cell. Now we look at the cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance which contains about 80% water and 20% dissolved substances. All the other organelles are located within the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is also the site of many chemical reactions. The nucleus is considered the brain of the cell. It is one of the most important organelles within the cell. The nucleus contains our genetic material in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. In case you're wondering what DNA is, deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule composed of two polynucleotide chains that coil around each other to form a double helix. Yes, 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 I wasn't expecting that you were going to understand what that meant. A DNA molecule is composed of two chains that coil around each other like a winding staircase. This molecule is what contains our genetic information. If you've ever heard of a DNA test, this is what it's referring to. That is where the DNA comes from, the nucleus of the cell. Up next, we look at mitochondria. And let me get this straight from early. Mitochondria is not a word. We have one mitochondrion, and more than one mitochondria. So now that I've cleared that up, let me tell you what it is. We refer to a mitochondrion as the powerhouse of the cell. These organelles release energy from the food we eat. 
we know that process as aerobic respiration. Cells requiring a lot of energy will have many mitochondria, for example, our muscle cells. Plant and animal cells also have ribosomes. These organelles produce or synthesize proteins. Up next, we look at endoplasmic reticulum. This is a network of tubules that transport substances throughout the cell. There are two types. We have rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached. So those tubules are going to transport those proteins produced by the ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the site of lipid and steroid synthesis. Of course, these aren't all the organelles, but these are some of the more important ones. When we look specifically at plant cells, we are going to find some organelles that are not present in animal cells, such as a cell wall, chloroplasts, and a large vacuole. The cell wall surrounds the plant cell. It is on the outside of the cell membrane. This is made of a molecule called cellulose, which gives rigidity and strength to the plant cell. It protects the plant cell and gives it its shape. We refer to plants as producers. Plants make food through a process known as photosynthesis. That process happens in this next organelle. Chloroplasts contain the green pigment chlorophyll that traps sunlight in order to produce glucose from carbon dioxide and water. We'll find an abundance of chloroplasts in the cells in the leaves of plants. Whereas the largest organelle in an animal cell is the nucleus, the largest organelle in a plant cell is the vacuole. A vacuole stores cell waste, secretions, or food. When it is filled, it becomes turgid and helps to keep plants upright. Animal cells also possess vacuoles, but those are smaller and temporary. Let's look at a comparison of plant and animal cells. Animal cells do not have a cell wall, while plant cells have a cell wall which is made of cellulose. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts or chlorophyll, while plant cells usually have chloroplasts which contain chlorophyll. When present, the vacuoles are small and scattered throughout the cytoplasm and their contents vary in animal cells, while in plant cells, they usually have one large central vacuole which contains cell sap. Animal cells may contain glycogen granules as a food store. Plant cells, on the other hand, may contain starch grains as a food store. Animal cells can have a great variety of shapes. Plant cells have a regular shape, usually round, square, or rectangular. The cells of plants, animals, fungi, and protists will possess basically all the organelles we have discussed, with differences among them. We refer to these as eukaryotic cells. Eukaryote literally means true nucleus. These cells have their DNA within a nucleus and their organelles are surrounded by membranes. Bacteria are examples of prokaryotes. Prokaryote means before nucleus. Scientists tell us that these organisms existed millions of years before plants and animals and would have evolved to produce the eukaryotes we have today. In prokaryotes, their DNA lies freely in the cytoplasm. They do not have a nucleus like in eukaryotes. Also, except for ribosomes, prokaryotes do not possess membrane-bound organelles. One important thing to note is that cells can only be formed from other cells. In today's lesson, we looked at cells and the organelles within them. We compared plant and animal cells, as well as prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Thank you for making it the Jamaican Science Teacher. Remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, and stay tuned for more interesting content like this one. Thank you. I wanna learn science, but I don't know where to go. I just click to YouTube and this is what the results show me. The Jamaican science teacher 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 The Jamaican science teacher
Jamaican science teacher. The Jamaican science teacher, yeah. 